I love him because he first loved me and he purchased my salvation on Calvary. I love him. I love him because he first loved me for he purchased my salvation on Calvary. I love him. I love him because he first loved me and he purchased my salvation on Calvary. Calvary. Kind Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you for one more time to gather in your house, the opportunity to gather in this place. We thank you, God, for your many manifold blessings. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for blessing us. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for strengthening and encouraging us. Now, kind Father, as we prepare to delve into your word, I want you, oh, God, to speak to your people. Father, there's something that needs to be said tonight. There's something that needs to be heard. Kind Father, I'm asking you to deliver this message in a way that only you can. And we forever give your name glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. I am, I want to talk tonight about uh, something that is a very familiar uh, topic amongst our churches, um, especially holiness Pentecostal churches. Uh, it is something that uh, it's, it's something, and actually it's someone we talk about often, uh, but I want us to really understand who it is we're talking about when we talk about uh, this thing slash him. So the, the, the misconception is that the apostolic church does not believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We do, I have made this abundantly clear, but for those that, that still kind of misinterpret it, let me make this very blunt. We believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. We just believe that all of the fullness of that Godhead was made bodily in flesh in the man, Jesus Christ. So, with that being said, I want to talk about the Holy Ghost because we seem to have this misconception that the Holy Ghost is something that you catch on Sunday while you're in church. Oh, you felt happy. You, I shouted. I, I shouted. I caught the Holy Ghost. No, 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 no. You, you, it, it's not. He's not. Uh, he's, he's not a disease. You don't catch him like you catch a cold. Um nor does he catch you. Uh, he doesn't just walk by and just decide to touch you. Uh, I know that's how some people have interpreted it, and some people have looked at it that way, and some people treat him that way, but that's not, that's not what it is. And so I, I want to take us back. So I'm going to start in the book of Joel, chapter number 2. In the book of Joel, chapter number 2, um, at verse 25. I'm not going to read the whole Joel chapter 2, but I'm going to start at verse number 25. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the, ca the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. 
and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else and my people shall never be ashamed and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions and also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens in those days will I pour out my spirit and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth blood and fire and pillars of smoke and the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon unto blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered from in the Mount of Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord has said and in the remnant those the, whom the Lord shall call. There's a couple things I want to extrapolate from uh, the portion of scripture that I just read. Number one, the first thing that is often misinterpreted and misquoted is in the, that 32nd verse. What is often misquoted is people say, well, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. The first thing we need to understand that the first evidence of the Holy Ghost is not always, well, I shouldn't say the first evidence because for some people it happens a little bit differently. So let me, let me not say the first. But one of the signs of the evidence of the Holy Ghost is there should be some deliverance. When you have the Holy Ghost, now I'm not talking about a doctrinal Holy Ghost. I'm talking about the real Holy Ghost. When you have the real Holy Ghost, it causes a change on the inside. It causes something to be birthed that was never there before. It causes something to exist that you didn't know existed. It brings, yes, the scripture, the Bible says that gifts come without repentance. Yes, that is true. However, or how never, you will never get to the place of that gift fully maturing outside of the hand of God. The hand of God or the breath of God, the ruah of God, however many times y'all deep folk want to try to call it different things, the point is you need the spirit of God. You need the spirit of God that's going to live in you. And so we always stop reading at verse number 28. And I understand that we, we get excited over verse 28 because in Acts chapter 2, when Peter gets up and he starts quoting this, he quoted the 28th verse. But that wasn't to say that the 28th verse was the only thing that was important. All right? Hush up, watch. Now, that, that doesn't mean that that was the only thing that was important. So l let's, look at what this, let's look at what this says here. Now, he said, it shall come to pass afterward that I will plot my spirit upon all flesh. Pause. I understand that we come from, and thank God the church that we live in today is getting, I don't want to say more progressive because it's not that the church is getting more progressive. I think we're finally catching up to the liberty that God had already given us. I think that um, coming from, see, American Christianity is based in Puritanism. That, that's what it's based on. It doesn't matter what, and, and, and it was always confusing to me. It, it was always confusing to me growing up because we were the quote-unquote holiness church. And I didn't understand that because every church, to the extent they know it, teach holiness. Every church. Every church, to the extent that they know it, or, or I shouldn't even say to the extent they know it, to the extent that they believe it's required of them, is going to practice holiness. 
Because when you come to a place where you just want God, you're going to do whatever I tell you you got to do to get him. If you ever get to the place where you're just, I just want God, okay, that's cool. But you're, if, if, I, <coughs> excuse me, if I told you that in order to get God, you could never drive another white car, as crazy as it sounds and as funny as it sounds, if you really believed it, you would never buy another white car. That's exactly it. And it's easy for people to twist and manipulate. I have been so intrigued by this one particular church, and I'm not going to call the church, but Cassandra has been watching me. I've been so intrigued with them, Tina, because they are so, they're so interesting to me. They, they consider themselves apostolic. If you ask them, they are apostolic Pentecostal holiness believers. If you ask them, they are baptized in Jesus' name. They tote Jesus' name. And it's crazy to me because they jump and they shout and they speak in tongues and their preachers get up and preach and, and go for it. I mean, they lay hands on folk and folk are falling out and they're speaking in tongues and they're, I mean, they're just gone. But you don't know if they're worshiping God or their bishop. It's the, cr and I don't mean to the point where it's like they respect, I'm talking about to the point where this man doesn't walk. Literally, they put him in a carriage. They put him in a carriage and carry him around. Yes. They call their bishop, this is going to give it away to some people that's watching. They call their bishop sweet daddy and it kills me. Because it, it, it's, it's, incredible to me that we, we had a song growing up in church. We sang, I cried, uh, what was it? I cried, Jesus, 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 Jesus all night long. Jesus, 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 until I found the Lord. They sing the same song and they say, I cried, daddy, 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 daddy all night long. It's amazing to me. It's, it's incredible to me how, watch this, People want, but here's the thing, they just want to be right. Is the man an invalid? Let me tell you something. He didn't start the church. He's the, who? Because he's daddy. He's God in the flesh. They literally believe that their bishop is the incarnation of God. And, and, and it's a, it's, amazing to me because I'm just like you got to stop watching it you're gonna become one of them I said no I'm not that's so ridiculous how does anybody become that but it's amazing to me what what was amazing to me was the devotion they truly believe that this one man and and don't get me wrong it's not this one man because he's like the third or fourth one started with Daddy Grace, and then from Daddy Grace it went to all the different, Daddy Grace died, another daddy took over. He died after a couple years, another daddy took over. That daddy, I told Cassandra, looked like, I told Cassandra, I said, that looked like he was your daddy. I said, that daddy looked like he was your granddaddy. He had long hair. He about Cassandra's complexion, had long gray hair slicked back. I said, that looked like that's your granddaddy. Let me, let me find out I made gra Daddy Grace's granddaughter. <laughs> But, and then he died and now this one took over. But but this is, so I don't know, and this is the thing, I don't know their whole doctrine, so I don't want to misquote it. From, from, from what I can gather, it's not that God, it, it's not that God is reincarnated, it's that the Spirit, I hope you brought enough for all of us. It's that the Spirit, <laughs> it, it's that the Spirit, no, go on, eat, girl. It, it's that the Spirit rests, that the Spirit of, the, of, the, of God, the, the Holy Ghost, which is what we're talking about, the Holy Ghost rests on the leader. And so they believe that because the Holy Ghost rests on the leader, everything he says, in, in terms of what they say in the Bible is right. Now, this is the thing. It was so amazing to me 
because people just want to be right. They have fallen down this rabbit trail and they're so far from where God really is, but they think they're right near him. Why? Because they took it at face value. They took what was served to them at face value and they just want to be right. What would happen if we were so dedicated to the Holy Ghost, not to a man, not to a man, not to me. I don't want y'all dedicated like that to me. Y'all get dedicated like that to me, I'm going to leave. Y'all can stay here and be crazy. And I mean, they put, they put his chair is up on a little pedestal in the pulpit, and it's white, and don't nobody allow it. They call it Daddy's Mountain. And it, Huh? You know what? Real talk. I said I want no real talk. I said I want to be invited to run a revival over there. Because doctrinally we agree. But they are very wrong when it comes to this. They are how and 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 this is the thing. How do we agree doctrinally and y'all are practicing idol worship? One of the tenets and let me back up and say this. One of the tenets of the holiness apostolic faith is when God said, I am the Lord God and there is none other before me. You cannot share co-space. There is no cohabitation with God. There is no co-equal with God. There is one God. He is God, capital H, is God. That's it. Now, if anybody else going to come through here, and, it, and Jesus said this in the Bible, he said, if they come up and they say, behold, he's over in the east, don't go. If they say, behold, he's over in the west, don't go. Why? Because he's been here one time. He came one time in flesh. That's it. That's it. He ain't coming back until he comes back. And when he come back, the whole earth going to know he's been here. Y'all getting what I'm saying? So it was this in it, it, it was this thing because the more I, I was watching first off they have great shout bands and I don't know why the most cults got the best music I mean they, they would just burn, 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 burn and I mean they was getting down with it and I'm just woo it was it was sounding good I ain't gonna lie to you it was sounding good but this is the thing I so I told Cassandra I said and again I'm not saying no church names I told Cassandra I said it's interesting though because how we grew up we used to equate the church that she grew up in with them. We looked at it the same way. And I've been open about how when me and Cassandra first got together and we got engaged, there were some people that did not want us to get married because we came from two church backgrounds, two separate church backgrounds. And, and the thought process was, they, and it was funny because it was on both sides. It wasn't just my side looking at hers. It was her side looking at mine saying, they ain't saved. And so it's interesting <coughs> because <coughs> I told her, I said, the crazy part is now that I've gotten to know the church that she came out of, I've gotten to know them. I've gotten to know their doctrine. I've gotten to know what it is they teach and what it is they believe. I no longer consider them a cult. I don't consider them a cult because now what, what changed it was understanding. Once you understood that their expression is different, just because your expression was different don't mean it's bad. Y'all, you get what I'm saying? And what we have done is we have said because your expression is not my expression, it's bad. That's not the case. I was talking to somebody the other day and I said some folk call him the Holy Ghost. Some folk call him the Holy Spirit. I don't care what you call him as long as you got him. I, 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 I don't care how you. Now, one day I will go into there's a difference between a Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit. Some, some don't consider him. Uh, some people consider him so a him. They don't say the. They just say he. Okay, that's fine. Do you have him? Do you have, I'm going to take a step here and I'm going to get in trouble, but it's okay. I, I'm, I'm me now. I'm, I'm, pr I'm pretty, I'm pretty uh, secure in who I am. Um, 
you know, I'm, I'm the pastor of a church. I'm the founder of a church. I'm, I'm the, good God, I'm the assistant presider of an organization. I'm pretty cool with who I am, okay? Um, when are we going to get to the place where we understand, I don't even care the words that were said when you got in the water. Did you understand why you got in the water? See, because if you understand why you do what you do, that will tell me the legitimacy of what you do. If you only do it because the pastor told you to, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. But if you know that you did it or you're do you, whatever you do, I'm not talking just about baptism, anything you do, if you know you're doing it because you want to be right, in the sight of God, you want to be holy in the sight of God. You want to be uh, 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 seen as being pure and being right. And I've read this and this is what it tells me. So this is what I'm going to follow. God, I cannot believe that God is going to throw away somebody that did the wrong thing due to good intention. What do I mean by that? I don't, I'm not talking about going out and robbing banks and murder and all that. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying that if your heart was in the right place, and the preacher said the wrong words over you during baptism, I don't believe that's going to send you to hell. Because now you're saying God is as petty as we are. Y'all getting what I'm saying? Uh, it just because the, what they call it? the um, What they call that thing? The CCM church? Just th like th them, them type of churches? Like like Maverick City, I think it's called, and Hillsong, and and Bethel, and what's all, all them, all nations, and all all them churches, the the ones that don't go, those, the other ones. Now, if you get up there, and and I've said this before, I've said this before, <laughs> I've said, <laughs> I've I've said this before though. I, it was, it was. I've said this before, I use, and this is the exact example I used before, uh, 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 um, days of Elijah. You know, there's some like us, there's no God like Jehovah, there's no God, but then there's others, there's no God like Jehovah, there's no God, why you start rocking on that one? Uh-uh, uh-uh, repent, repent. <laughs> but my, my point is, I don't care what your expression is, do you know what you're expressing? Yeah, there's two sides to every, listen, in every church, there's two types of people. There's this, and there's this. There's that, and then there's that. I don't care what your expression is. And I think the mistake that we've made is we have mastered telling people, you ain't got the Holy Ghost if you don't express it this way. Yeah, that now. Legit. Legit. Now, the first time I saw that, I ain't going to lie to you. Coming up out of old apostolic church, I was ready to sling oil. Y'all, I'm sitting in church. They just, <laughs> I said, look, give me the oil, okay? All of this is a devil. The devil is alive. Satan the Lord rebuke. I was, I was, I was ready. <laughs> I was ready. Y'all, I turned into Robert Tillman. I said, cut, cut up some paper towel. Put, put, throw it on the people. Just throw it on the people. Listen, but different expression does not mean one outcome. Let me take that a step further. Watch this. In that days, afterward, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. It didn't say all of them, but it said they will prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Why will old men dream dreams? Why will old men dream dreams? Why are old men relegated to dreaming dreams? Hmm? It's because their time is just about up. 
when you get to that place, you can only dream about what you wanted to do. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. They will foretell. They will speak of the future. Why? Because the future is in front of them. Old men shall dream dreams. Young men will see vision. This is why, and I'm going to say something here, and a lot of people ain't going to like it, but I'm going to say it anyhow. This is why you don't need to start pastoring at 60. Hello, somebody. You need to... And, 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 and let me just say this. I'm not just talking about pastoring. <coughs> I'm not just talking about pastoring. But you don't need to birth nothing when you're old. Why? Because you have no vision. Now your, 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 your viewpoint is formed by what you've already seen. So now, watch this. The beauty of a vision is a vision is limitless. I can change the vision as many times as I want to. Why? Because it's a living, breathing organism. I can say one day I want a daycare, and then one day say the daycare ain't enough, I need an elementary school. And then turn around and say the elementary school ain't enough, I need a high school. And the high school turn around, and now I need a college. You get what I'm saying? It's expandable. But when you get to the place of dreaming dreams, now you're saying, I wish. I could get to such and such. I'm talking old. Now, I'm not talking about old as in age. I'm talking about old as in position. Nobody that is a father in the gospel. Okay, I'll put it to you like this. My bishop, our bishop, would be a fool to go out and try to start a church right now where he is. Now, it is his job to deputize us. Get us ready, send us out, and then teach us what it is that we need to know. But he himself going to do it? No. Uh, but unfortunately, what we have done is, what, and matter of fact, let me pause there and, and say this too. Now, this ain't about bishop. This is just in general because I grew up in this. Every pastor I've grown up under died in office. I have never been under a pastor that retired. They have died 80 plus years old. Just, this is where the Lord called me to be. Excuse me. We are suffering. We are suffering because I do not have a diet for oatmeal and raisins. And yet, all you are giving me is oatmeal, raisins, and Metamucil to keep us regular. I'm regular. Y y are you catch but are you catching what I'm saying? Catch it in the spirit. You have to know what the people need. You have to know what you need. You have to know that, okay, now's the time to go. And this is why I'm telling, this is why I tell everybody here, go. When God gives you a vision, go for it. If he gives you a vision about the business, start it. If he gives you the vis vision about a new house, go find it. If he give, go for it. Why? Because there's going to come a day when you're going to look back and say, I should have did it. When I had, <laughs> I ain't got the time. That's, that's the problem. <laughs> when? <laughs> Brooklyn tomorrow, Jersey Thursday, Baltimore Friday. I guess I could squeeze it in for two hours before Trayvon's graduation on Saturday. <laughs> but this is why it's important, watch this, that you don't judge somebody's position. What do I mean by that? <coughs> you don't have the right. Cassandra, you own a business. Frazier, you own a business that's a multiplicity of businesses. Now, and really you do too. Now, your expertise is in one area. Not one area. You're not limited to one area, but I'm just saying. Your, your expertise is in photography. Your expertise is in publication. Because you're in publication, you don't get to critique her photography. All you get to do is say, this is where I can use that photography. You, are you getting what I'm saying? And now, your critique of her publication does not come in until you see the publication and say, wait a minute, it got away from the original intent 
of what was taken. Only in the church do we let people that have expertise in money be the gardener. Only in the church do we make the person who's a photographer balance the books. And then we wonder why it don't work. No, 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 but I'm just saying. And then we wonder why it don't work. If we learn to stop judging and critiquing people by what it is we see and learn to dig deeper and say, okay, what gifts were in there? Hello. Exactly. Exactly. <coughs> That's right. And, and, let's say this, ding, ding, ding. Everybody can't prophesy over you. Period. End of discussion. The Lord told me to tell you. Well, tell the Lord, write it down, give it to me later. Write it down, give it to me. I put it in my pocket. I'll forget about it. That's happened. Because I don't receive words from everybody. I, I don't, not saying that I'm better. Than, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying. Good God. I'm not saying that I'm better than anybody. I'm not saying that they're not good enough to prophesy to me or anything. But you got to be careful about what you allow to come into you. You got to be careful about who you even allow to see your vision. Why? Because their vision ain't like your vision. I wear glasses. I don't see everything Cassandra sees. So I can't, tr I have to trust her when she says that she sees certain things that I don't see. Because I won't see it till I get right up next to it. Same thing in the spirit. There's some people around us that see things afar off. And you got to be careful about what you receive when you can't see that far off. Don't let them shorten your line of sight because they can't see far. Don't let them tell you that it ends at the end of the, at the, end of the aisle. No, that's just as far as they can see. But no, 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 we're not going to accept that from everybody. All right, Acts 2, Acts 2, we're talking about the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all gathered together in one place, and suddenly there came a sound of heaven, the rush of mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Let me go ahead and drop down. We all know the story of the day of Pentecost. If you don't know the story of the day of Pentecost, why are you in a Pentecostal church? Verse 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken unto my words. For these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing as it is but the third hour of the day. Pause. They thought they were drunk. Why? Because the Holy Ghost made them do something that was outside the norm. It does not mean that the Holy Ghost is going to make you be obscene. You cannot be obscene and then blame it on the Lord. You don't get to do that. You don't get to be un, uh, obscene. You don't get to be, uh, make, make a spectacle of yourself. You don't get to, the, and the Lord, hey, ha, da, 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 da. no, 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 because the Lord do stuff in order. House never, they, will, they were doing something that, watch this, was orderly for where they were, but disorderly to those that did not understand. So now, that means I don't have to go out of my way to try to make you comfortable. However, I'm not going to go out of my way to be disrespectful, be obscene, be vulgar. Be, you don't need to do that. And let me say this. If you do need to do that, then you don't got the real Holy Ghost. Because when you got power, didn't, didn't, didn't somebody else say, uh, it wasn't, it's not the Bible, but somebody had said it. Uh, it. It's a movie, I think it was. He said, walk, walk softly and carry a big stick. What's understood need not be explained. If I know who I am, I don't have to walk around bragging about me. I don't have to walk into a room and, yes, yes, the prophet is here. Yes. 
Yes. Would you like a word? Would you, would you like a word? Uh, there's three people in here that need a word. No, everybody in here needs a word. Y'all getting what I'm saying? You don't need to be obscene. But watch this. These are not drunken as ye suppose. Clearly they're acting strange. Seeing as it is but the ninth hour, the third hour of the day, me and nine in the morning. Now, why y'all getting tipsy at nine in the morning? I don't understand. Y'all, come on now. A good party don't start till the sun go down. What you getting? What you getting? What 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 you getting turned for at at nine in the morning? Now, I somebody make it make sense. It ain't giving what it's supposed to give. That math ain't math, and you got too much dip on your chip or whatever else you're saying you want to say. Yeah, that, that just, it, don't, it don't line up. It don't add up. Peter standing up with the 11 lifted up his voice and said, Listen, these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel. What you're seeing is what God told us he would do. So when they see you and you're moving funny, uh, the only explanation you got to tell them is, this is that. This is that. What are you doing? This is that. This is, why, why are you doing it like that? Because that's what I'm doing. And, and that great prophet Bruno Mars said it best. Don't believe me, just watch. You, you don't know what I'm doing? You don't have to know what I'm doing. You don't have to understand my moves. You don't have to understand why I do everything I do, why I can't go certain places I want to go, why I can't be with certain people I want to be with. You don't have to understand that. All you got to understand is just watch my come up. You see me here now, watch me. That's it. That's it. See, where we get lost is we try to explain ourselves to folks. Why do we feel the need to explain ourselves? Is that what it is? Okay, for those of y'all that are online, I see y'all commenting and watching. God bless you. Uh, if y'all have any questions or anything, go ahead, type them in the box. Uh, or Elder Fraser said it's a trauma response. It's a trauma response. And you know what? I agree with that because we're so used to having to justify everything we do. Everything we do. Why you pick that up? From the time you're a child. From the time you're a child. Put the microphone down. Put, put the remote down. Why you change the TV? And you're always on edge. It's always, uh, it's, a, huh? No is definitely a complete sentence. It's a, it's a hard sentence to give to some people. But when you learn the power of it, I'm being so serious. I, listen, it makes you better at everything you do when you learn that you don't owe nobody. Pastor Moss used to say this, and, and, and I used to cringe a little bit when she would say it. When you realize you don't owe nobody nothing but to love them, the love will make me tell you the truth. I promise you I don't know his name. Everybody knows Sarah Jakes. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He don't know. You don't know if he's saved. <laughs> that part. That part. But it's. Tr but think about it. Think about all the stuff you could have did if you hadn't told somebody else yes. I got it. Think of all the stuff you could have did if you hadn't told somebody else yes. I, listen, I'm guilty of it. I do it all the time. Not too long ago, I can talk about it because they ain't listening to me. They had General Assembly. Not too long ago, I was invited to a cookout. Frazier, I ain't want to go. Nothing in me wanted to go. But because I said I'm always the one to say no, let me go on, go over there and sit down for a couple hours. Had it planned out. It was plotted in my head. Telling me I had it. I said, we're going to sit over there a couple hours. Then Michael's going to have to go to work. I'm going to have to get up, take him to work, and 
that's the end of that. Get me a couple hot dogs. All right, cool. Time came for Michael to go to work. I hear my wife go, well, you want to just drop him off and then we come back? <sighs> yeah, which I didn't like. That, that was when I knew my plan was thwarted. <laughs> my point is this. You give up so much. And it's not just yes. Let me tell you something. You don't need to answer to everybody. Now, you got to answer to somebody. You know what I'm saying? There's always going to be a situation where somebody needs to understand why you're doing what you're doing. However, I don't owe a responsibility. I don't have a responsibility to everybody that crosses my path and ask, why did you do that? Because I wanted to. Why, why did you go that way? Because that's the way I went. Somebody asked me uh, the week before convocation, why are you at Burger? Because I didn't want to be with you. What, you want me to hurt your feelings? I'll hurt your feelings if I have to. Like, uh, the, the, we have to get to the place where we don't feel so beheld into people that do not have our vision, that do not have our understanding, that don't know where Blue Ivy is going, that don't know where creative marketing, what? Blue Alice. Blue Alice. <laughs> who is Blue Ivy? Oh, is that who it is? Because <laughs> I promise you, I say it all the time. Yo, Jesus. <coughs> That's it. That's it. And here's the beautiful thing about it. Isn't it interesting that the people... Mm-hmm. But isn't it interesting that nine times out of ten, the people that want to tell you not to are the same ones that when you do and you're successful, oh, I was with Tina from the start. I was, I was her, I was her. She, she took my wedding pictures first. She, she I, I was the first one to call her. I was the first one to book her. And, and, and you know, we're going to be on the side like, oh, we Really? That was you, huh? Okay. All right. Mean, meanwhile, meanwhile, we was in the car talking earlier about how you're going to get your bread next year at convocation. Well, yeah, we, play, we figured something out. I'm taking it to the bishop. We're going to do it. But my point is, my, my point is, when you get to where it is, you're trying to go. The same distractors, defactors, the same ones that will tell you, no, you can't, they're going to they show up and say, see, I told you the whole time you could. I had your back from the beginning. The same ones that told, this is why I knew my grandmother was a woman of God. I knew she was saved and she knew the Lord because before she got sick, 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 she, she was sick, but she wasn't sick, 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 sick. And, it, huh? Yeah, it went on four six. She was just one six, and 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 she uh, had an in she had an encounter with Cassandra that changed her entire opinion of Cassandra. Now, over the time, over the years, me and Cassandra had been together. She loved Cassandra, but she never really knew Cassandra from New York. And New York people love different. They they love, but they love from like over there. Like, it's not a here love, it's a their love. You know what I'm saying? And, and my grandmama being from the South is like a, no, you're not, com you're not coming in. And see what she doing? She was just like, mm, I love you from over there. And so when my grandmother got sick, Cassandra um, helped my grandmother. My grandmother had gotten sick and she had gotten to the place where she couldn't walk anymore. And she couldn't like get out of the, she, so she was in a wheelchair. She couldn't get out of the chair to go to the, to go to the bathroom. And she, she had a little accident, whatever, whatever. Cassandra helped her, cleaned her up. Cassandra cleaned up my grandmother, got my grandmother changed, all of that. Said something to my grandmother that literally brought tears to my grandmother's eyes. 
And my grandmother came out of the bathroom. Cassandra brought my grandmother back out of the bathroom. We were at my Aunt Carol's house. Brought her out the bathroom. And Cassandra went back into the bathroom to get herself cleaned up. And my grandmother looked at me with tears in her eyes and said, I never knew Cassandra loved me that much. And it broke her. It broke her to the point where she said, she is my daughter. I always wondered if she accepted me, but she is my daughter. People will never know the impact, many people, will never know the impact they play on another. You will never know fully the impact you play on somebody else's life. This is why you can't be bothered by what folk got to say. Because while there's three people, even if there's, if, if there's one person that's looking at you saying, oh, why are they doing such and such? There's another two or three people saying, yo, y'all saw what she did. That was just the sign I needed to know that this is what I needed to do. You have to be careful about allowing people to distort you or to, to, deter, to deter you from doing what it is God has instructed you to do. Let me say this too. If it was going to be easy, he wouldn't have gave it to you to do. Let me say it again. If it was going to be easy, he wouldn't have gave it to you to do. It's easy to do certain things. It's easy to get a job as a photographer. It's easy to go and collect a check from another company that's already established and built, built its own name, Art Rich Studios. I don't even know if they're still in existence, but I remember them because they did my high school pictures. It, it, it's easy for you to go get a job and put in a resume and show them some of your work and them to hire you and to give you a paycheck. Here's the problem with it, because it's easy to do it that way. It's easy to get a paycheck that way, but your name never goes anywhere. And the Bible says that your name is to be preferred above rubies. So now I'm conflicted. Do I want easy money or do I want my name? And it's not just that with a job. It's with everything God has given for us to do. Do I want an easy payoff or do I want my name? It, 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 do, do I want, and I was thinking about this even today, even as it relates to Citadel. It's easy. I was talking to Pastor Simmons, and we were talking, this was a couple weeks ago, we were talking about something, and we started encouraging each other, and Simmons was here, and he was talking about how when he was on West Street, their building on West Street was smaller than this building. Can you imagine? Smaller? I'm like, Lord, this is, well, God. And he, and he was like, nah, he said, Gaskins, we had just this side. This is all we had. And I told him, I said, you know what, though, bro? It's easy to inherit. It's hard to birth. And, and that's not just talking about a church. It's easy to inherit wealth. Hello, Donald Trump. It's hard to birth it. It's easy to inherit a, 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 good, a, a good reputation. It's hard to birth it. It's easy to inherit ministry. You, you, and what do I mean by inherit ministry? Who is Manasseh Jordan? Don't know, right? Who's Ebenar Jordan? Everybody know Ebenar Jordan. Manasseh Jordan is his son. Manasseh Jordan, I ain't going to say what I want to say because I'm live and he follows me on Instagram. But he just is what he want to be. Okay? But he gets invited places. Why? Because he has his father's last name. And so because he has his father's last name, it's, oh, that's, that's Bernard Jordan's son. So what's on the father got to be on the son. It's easy to inherit. But let me go back to the father, because the father had to birth something for you to inherit it. What we need to understand is, especially in 2022, the reason it's taking you the hard way is because that's the way you're going to keep it. If you get it easy, you lose it easy. 
So what God does is he makes us put some sweat equity in it. Come on, millionaire mindset. Yeah, until you play the stock market and lose everything. Listen, I thought I knew what pastoring was when I was pastoring APCOM. I thought I knew what I was doing. You couldn't tell me I didn't know what I was doing. Matter of fact, I sat there and I told that lady, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Frazier, I sat in that board meeting and they tried to, you know how I feel about boards telling the pastor what to do. <laughs> oh, God in heaven. Lord knows he should have raised me Baptist so I could be better with people because I don't do well. I don't. I don't. I'm sorry to the people watching on live. I'm not good. I'm, I'm, I'm better now. But I'm better now. I listen to you and Tyler now. Sometimes I override y'all, but I listen, though. But, but they sat in that meeting. I'll never forget they sat in that meeting. <laughs> They start to try to tell me what I, well, pastor, what you got to do is, and I was listening to him till he said, got to. I was with him. We had a good conversation. I was, I was, you know, stomaching it. I was, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> then he said, well, pastor, what you got to do is you got to tell them. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, pause. And I literally said, now, I, I know that my predecessor made everything a church vote. Um, let me be very clear. I sat there in the office and told him, I have every intention on pastoring this church. I am not going to babysit. I'm going to pastor. So I am going to be very, more very much more active than what you're used to. With that being said, I ain't doing that. This is how I'm going to handle it. Couldn't tell me I didn't know what I was doing. Huh. Huh. Let me get over here where you ain't got any, and you don't inherit nothing. You riding around looking at buildings like, Lord Jesus, how'd y'all get that? My point is, your position is going to change your perspective. And so don't let people that don't have your perspective give their position on where you are. Because if you're not in the same position of me as me, and let me be very clear, nobody's in the same position as you. Now, there are people that have been in the position that I'm in. I will listen to their wisdom. I will listen to their wisdom. When Bishop says, I, Gaskins, you need to do such and such. I mean, I'll, I'll say this one because I'm not doing it. He has been begging me, not begging me, he's been commanding me because y'all know Bishop don't really request. <laughs> he has been telling me for more than a year that we need to start having church at 11 o'clock. And for more than a year, I'm like, yeah. Uh -uh. Now, I get why he says what he says. I understand. But here's the difference. If I was going for the crowd he was going for, then I'd do it. If you're, if you're not fishing for the same type of a catch, stop letting them tell you what to use as bait. Because the truth is, if you use the bait they use, you're going to catch what they caught. But if you want to catch something different, you got to do something different. All right, let me close this up because it's about 8 o'clock. It's after 8 o'clock. What time is it? Come here, laptop. Oh, it's 7.59. Oh, I did good tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 
1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. You must have a living, active relationship with God yourself. You cannot base your relationship with God on your pastor. You cannot base your relationship with God on your friends. You cannot base your relationship with God on your enemies. You cannot base your relationship with God on your loved one, spouse, lack thereof, multiplicity thereof. You cannot base that on anything or anybody else. You got to know God for yourself. And when you are when you know you know when you know that you know God for yourself, know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. When I understand that the Spirit of God dwells in me now, I don't need your opinion anymore. And even if you give it, it's all right because I have a blessed assurance. What's that hymn Cassandra saying? Jesus is mine. Even if you tell me I'm going the wrong way, something on the inside, the old church used to sing, something deep inside is telling me to go ahead. Everybody else is standing around saying, no, don't do that. Tina, don't do that. Cassandra, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't, don't go that way. Don't do that. But there's something on the inside that's saying, no, 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 keep going. I got you. I got you. Keep going. Keep stepping. I got you. You have to understand that that is why the Holy Ghost dwells within us. Because there will be moments when we feel so far away from God. And then we have to turn around and realize, wait a minute, you're not far. You're right here. We love to look at God as an out there thing. We don't ever stop to think about being God being in here. We always have to go externally, we feel like, to get to God. But didn't the Bible say that the word of God is nigh thee even in your mouth? Not in your pastor's mouth, not in the bishop's mouth, not in the overseer's mouth, in your mouth. What did God put in you? God told, God told Moses, I'm not even going to go to the next scripture. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. No, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Ooh, yeah, okay. Yes, I am. Romans 5 and 5. And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is showed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. God to ask Moses. Moses gets out there by the Red Sea. Children of Israel getting on Moses' last nerve. I mean his la on, on his good and greasy last nerve. Gets out there and they said, Lord, what we going to do? Moses turns around and looks at the Lord and says, Lord, now we at this here Red Sea. Uh, we, we, we here at this here Red Sea, and uh, we got an army behind us, and we got this Red Sea in front of us. What is we going to do? What did God say to Moses? What is in your hand? Why are you calling me? Didn't I tell you way back in the, in, in, the, in the wilderness when you saw the burning bush that didn't catch on fire? Didn't I tell you then, take the staff that's in your hand? Why are you calling me when I've already given you the answer? And y'all, real talk, that's what I hear God saying to us today. Why are you calling me when I gave you that? If you're going to call me, call me for something hard. But what you're calling me for, I already gave you the answer to. What is in your hand? God, I need to be healed. What's in your hand? God, my mind is so troubled. What's in your hand? God, I, don't, I have no peace in my house. What is in your hand? This is why God has given us the Holy Ghost. This is why God has let literally <laughs> breathe his breath in us, not just on us. The Bible declares in the book of Genesis, I wish I had time to really go through this. The Bible declares in the book of Genesis that God formed man out of the dust of the earth and then he <laughs> 
breathed into his nostrils, into, into, I-N-T-O, into, and man became a living soul. It's not what's on me that keeps me holy. It's what's in me. It's not what's on me. And then this is why I said in the beginning of the lesson, I don't want us to get into the verbiage of talking about the Holy Ghost fell on me. No, I want him in me. He lives in me. He walks in me. He works through me. I am not God, but I have the of God in me. And because I have the breath of God, because I have the spirit of God, because I have, as the old mothers I grew up in said, the Holy Ghost. Now that was another one. That was the Holy Ghost. That's different from the Holy Ghost. We got the Holy Ghost when we went to college. Before college, we had the Holy Ghost. Because I have him, there's certain things that we got to get to the place where we understand it's more than just saying, I am more than a conqueror through him that loved us. It's more than that. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. I, I'm, not, I'm not just a conqueror means there was a battle and we fought and I won. But when I'm more than a conqueror, there was a battle. But there wasn't much of a fight because greater is he that's in me. There are battles that we deal with, and honestly, if I'm going to be truthful, we deal with those battles because we ourselves are teeter-tottering between two opinions. There's battles that we're fighting, myself included, that we put on ourselves. God has already given us how to get rid of it. Certain things that we battle, certain fights that we battle, certain issues that we, 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 we deal with. And, and the truth of the matter is it's because we won't let it go. We won't let it go. I let it go, and I do good for three days, and then on the fourth day, I'm right back to it. That's the, that's the I'm coming back to it. I need a bigger stage so I could do it properly. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but this is what we do. This is what we do. I saw this meme. I saw this meme, and... It was like, it was, two, it was two pictures. It was like, the first one was, it was this guy. It was this guy. It was a guy and some friends, and they was out, I guess, at the club drinking. And the, the top meme said, me, me in the bar with my boys screaming, single all summer 2020. And then the bottom was him at home on the phone, me later that night begging, begging babe to come back. And that's us. That's us. We come to church, feel real good. Ooh, I'm free. Ooh, do, 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 do. Go home. That anointing wear off. You, I'm going to go lay down. You don't smell that frankincense oil no more. Because <laughs> now you smelling another scent my God today. This is what we do. But we get, and then we get discouraged because we come to church and we're like, God, I thought you took it from me. I thought, I thought I was delivered. I thought, I, I, like Andrew Codwell, I am delivered. I thought I was delivered. I thought it was over. And God is saying, yeah, I took it from you, but you snatched it back from me. And what did I always say? God is a perfect gentleman. If you ask him for it, he'll give it back to you because he gave you the freedom of choice. That's why he said, choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. All right, I'm done. This was fun. This was fun. I haven't taught in a while. I, no, I, I really don't. I really don't. It's not my thing. I'm more of a, <laughs> in the Bible, said, that's, that's me. That's me. That's me. You want proof? Look at who comes to hear me preach versus who come to hear me teach. <laughs> me can't, me can't. But nonetheless, um, let's really, and I'm, I'm going to be digging into this for a while. Not in Bible class, but just in general. I'm going to be <coughs> digging into this for a while because we need, and, and I'm, I'm being very general when I say what I'm about to say. We need the Holy Ghost. 
But when I say we need the Holy Ghost, I'm not saying that we need because we don't have it, but we need to know how to use it. Understand that it does more than just make me jump and shout and speak in tongues. Because my, my Holy Ghost makes me go back and repent when I'm wrong. My Holy Ghost makes me go back and say, hold up, we had a problem and I don't want there to be a problem. There's more to the Holy Ghost. If you just bought a car and all you do is drive the car, but you don't never, you don't never use the car play, you don't never open the sunroof, you don't never roll down the window, you don't never, my godmother got a car. My godmother, I think it's like a 2009 Nissan Altima. I'll be surprised if that car got 30,000 miles on it. Cause she go, she don't go nowhere. She go to stop a shop and then go back home. She was working at home before the pandemic. So she literally just went to stop and shop in the church. That's it. That's all. The car is about 12 years old, but it looked brand new. Cause she don't go nowhere. I got in the car one time, she picked me up for church. And I got in the car one time and it had a CD player that ain't never played a CD. Now think about this. It's 2022, she still got that same car. How you didn't use some, ooh, I just got a word there. Preachers get a word off of everything. How you got something that's technically brand new, but it's so new and it ain't been used to where now it's out of date. Brand new to you but out of date to everybody else because you ain't even caught up to where you are. Y'all get what I'm saying? Why have all of these gifts in the Holy Ghost? Why walk around sick when you got healing? Why walk around broke when the cattle on a thousand hills belongs to the spirit that lives within you? That don't make sense. That math ain't mathing. I'm going to live in the fullness of what God gave me. I do. Everybody standing. I do. I do. Got too much dip on your chip. I heard that. I heard, man, I heard that in my spirit today, and it just blessed me. And I've been saying it all day. That girl came, she said to me, she said, Ty, you can't do it. I said, hey, 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 you got too much dip on your chip now. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> Bring that back. Bring that back. Put some of that ranch back in that bucket. We are going to be everything, and this is why I have, I, I, I will not, the, um, 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 my Jamaican church down there in Waterbury, they sing this song, I will not suffer. I will not beg for bread. The Lord is my provider. I will not beg for bread. I'm not going to say the next part because I don't say that in the pulpit. But that's what they say. That's what they say when they had said what they had said. All right. Listen, we have gotten so, so far away from our. No, you were good. We, we've gotten so far away from our second and fourth Friday night prayers, but we ain't. But we ain't. But we ain't having it this week because I'm being in Baltimore. So <laughs> we'll pick that up in July. Praise God. Amen. Please, ma'am, please, sir, continue to pray for us. Uh, tomorrow starts our traveling. And so pray for us. We will have a busy week. If I come in Sunday and I'm asleep, just leave me alone and shout around me. Y'all be all, I promise I'm going to be here. But if I slump in that chair and I just somebody else take the mic, get up and preach yourselves happy and shout all around me. I'll, I'll be dancing with y'all in the spirit. I'll do one of these. I'll do one of these so y'all know I'm with you. I'll do one of those. All right. Sunday morning, we will sit Sunday morning. Sunday at 2 o'clock, we will see you here um, for service. Am I forgetting anything? July the 9th, I want to hammer that in. For those of you that are watching, July the 9th, I need everybody, everybody, everybody ought to go to Sunday school. And on July 9th, everybody got to come to TRC Bible Praise Ministries. Everybody, I need the praise team to sing me good and happy. And let's have a good time in the Lord. Amen?
All right. I'm going to, oh, that's, that's my bishop calling. I'm going to go ahead and end this here. But I love you all dearly. Uh, and look out to the, keep a lookout at the church um, Facebook, excuse me, for announcements and different things as they come up because I know there's more and I'm forgetting them. All righty. Anything I'm forgetting? No? Anything? No? All right. Get your Blue Alice sweatshirt. I said it right that time. Get your Blue Alice sweatshirt, everybody. You know what we're going to do? We're going to do a Blue Alice day. Everybody got to wear their Blue Alice merch. I'm going to do that when I come back from Baltimore, though. Because, you know, I'm going now. Yeah, you got to wear the merch. All right. Let's look to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. God, we thank you, we praise you, we magnify you. I'm asking you tonight, God, go by Sister Stacy. I want you to touch her. God, touch her and heal her body right now in the name of Jesus. You know the diagnosis, you know the issue, God, but you're the healer of all healers. God, so we're asking you, heal Riri right now in the name of Jesus. Touch and heal her body, God, as only you can. The same way you have brought me up, I want you to bring them up. Father, in the name of Jesus, heal Portia tonight. In the name of Jesus, I want you to bless and keep all of us, God. Every member whose name I can't remember to call and those who I have called, the ones who are here, the ones who are not here, bless and keep us, God. Wake up the power of the Holy Ghost that ri resides on the inside, that we may know who and whose we are, what we are, what we are capable of. Kind Father, in the name of Jesus, I say thank you. I praise you for your great marvelous works. I thank you and praise you because you are the great God. You are the great Jehovah. You are the great I am. God, we thank you. We bask in your presence and we love you. And Father God, I'm asking you to keep us. Continue to touch and heal our bishop, God, in the name of Jesus. Bring him, Lord, healing, God. 